Hey y'all, my name is Gregory Ajid, and I'd like to welcome you to my Career Day presentation. Tonight's presentation is brought to you by Second Line Arts Collective. Please visit us at www.secondlinearts.org. And be sure to follow us on all the social media platforms. I'm really excited to bring this presentation to you all here on YouTube. I've done this several times at a couple high schools in New Orleans and also a few colleges here and there. Tonight, I have a couple goals of this presentation. First off, I wanted to give you all an opportunity to better get to know me. I wanted to speak a little bit about the experiences I've had in my life that have brought me to this point in my career where I'm sitting here in a hotel room in St. Paul, Minnesota, on tour with the Michael Buble Band. And I'm sure for those of you who follow me on Instagram and, and all those social media things have seen me play. And I really wanted to take this opportunity to um, talk about the things, the experiences, the opportunities I've had that have led me to this point in my career. I think it's really important to kind of demystify the process that artists go through. Oftentimes you see us on stage performing, but you all don't get an opportunity to see all the work, the planning, and the, uh, the foresight that has gone to achieving these goals. So tonight I really wanted to uh, share some of those things with you all and hopefully, hopefully give you all some tools to achieve those goals too. And most importantly, the last thing I wanted to do is share some good career advice, some things that will help you in whatever field you decide to go into, and uh, more importantly, things that will help you in your life to just be a good person and a happy person. The first thing I wanted to do is share a couple of videos of me playing over the years, and that way you all can get a better idea of who I am and what I do as a musician. The first video I'm gonna share is from 2001, and this is at the Louis Armstrong Jazz Camp Summer Concert. Uh, I believe this is the first jazz clarinet solo I ever took in my life, so bear with me. It's a little sad, but the most important thing is that there's obviously been a lot of progress made since 2001. So anyways, enjoy it, and uh, I'm just gonna be embarrassed while y'all watch. The second video is from 2015, and this is me performing with Delphio Marcellus and the Uptown Jazz Orchestra, and this is us performing a Charles Mingus composition entitled Monin. And the last clip I'm going to share is from this past summer, 2022. And this is while we were touring the United Kingdom with Michael Buble. And this is a tune called Such a Night. Such a night. So as you can see, I've had the opportunity to perform in a variety of musical situations with a bunch of different types of musicians and on very different stages. And the most important part is that I've gotten better since 2001. So first off, how do we get from this cute little kid playing a clarinet? And just for the record, that is me. I'm about seven years old. And uh, how do we get from this kid to this, this kid over here playing at Madison Square Garden? Uh, doing a saxophone solo with the Michael Buble band. So let's get right into it. My name is Gregory Ajid. I play the clarinet and the saxophone. I currently serve as the artistic director of Second Line Arts. Uh, this is a nonprofit that my friend and I, Darian Douglas, created in 2017. Uh, we started this with the intent of merging music business education and traditional arts education for the next generation of New Orleans musicians. And we do a summer camp, 
We also do um, preschool through third grade early music education programs. And we also have a podcast called The Working Artist Project. I'm currently on the road touring with Michael Buble, and it's an absolutely amazing experience. Uh, Michael is an incredible singer, and the band is made up of top-notch musicians. Uh, it's truly a privilege to get to travel the world, play with Killin' Cats, and also play for audiences that are so respectful and truly um, appreciate the music. It's really, it's really a surreal opportunity, and I'm very fortunate to be part of this gig. Overall, I'm a freelance musician, and so I'm self-employed, and I essentially just kind of go gig to gig, and all of these different things that I do in my life come together to create this, uh, this cool little life that I've built for myself. So let's start from the beginning. I can always remember being part of a family that was very supportive of music and the arts. Uh, both my mom and dad were very encouraging of me taking music lessons. I remember being five years old and taking uh, group piano lessons when I was living in Hawaii. And um, just always, I was always very interested in musical instruments and listening to CDs. So this is a picture of me when I was seven years old, and this is the first time I ever played a clarinet. So my family is from Europe, and this particular summer, we were going back to Switzerland to uh, visit some family, and both my mom and dad had to run an errand on this particular afternoon, so I got to spend the day with my uncle. And my uncle was a musician who played clarinet, and um, this day he, he whipped out the clarinets, and uh, he let my brother and I play on them, and it was like one of the most fun things I had ever done. I was so excited and I just loved the instrument so much. So the following Christmas, I was gifted a clarinet as one of my presents. At this point, I was in elementary school in Hawaii and I was playing clarinet in the uh, Hahaione Elementary School Band for fifth and sixth grade. When I was 12 years old, I moved to New Orleans, Louisiana, and that's kind of where I first began uh, becoming acquainted with jazz music. I studied at the Louis Armstrong Jazz Camp. I had the great fortune of uh, being mentored by Alvin Baptiste, Kid Jordan, Clyde Kerr Jr., and uh, so many other great New Orleans musicians. I attended Jesuit High School in New Orleans, and I also attended the New Orleans Center for Creative Arts. In 2009, I went to Loyola University where I got my bachelor's degree in uh, music business. This was a very unique opportunity for me because here I studied classical music. At this point in my life, I had never studied any classical music, and it was a total shock to my system to be immersed in that world. But I'm so fortunate for that training and those experiences because that all helped me um, be prepared for this current gig that I have. And finally, in uh, 2014, I got my master's degree from the University of New Orleans in jazz studies. So this is one of my favorite slides right here. And this is the slide that lists all the jobs that I've ever had in my life. I love this slide so much because it just shows a journey through so many different types of professional experiences. And it makes me really, really, really appreciate where I am today. Uh, as you can see, the first job that I ever had, I was 16 years old. I worked at Saki Cafe in Kenner, Louisiana, where I was a busboy. Uh, after that, I started working at American Eagle down at the Esplanade Mall. I believe that the uh, the summer that I graduated high school, a couple of friends and I were landscaping, and we were like literally digging holes in the the hot Louisiana heat. And I really am grateful for those experiences in high school because it taught me that making money is uh, something that should be respected. When you see people working jobs you need to respect them because I feel like they're doing something honorable and earning that money is difficult. So whether you are a bus boy or whether you work in construction or any type of job that you have, I feel like I learned to respect people who live that life because they are doing hard work and it makes me appreciate the things that they do to make my life easy. The next job I had, I was a, a waiter at the Pelican Club and that's a fine dining restaurant in the French Quarter in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I did that all throughout college. I, I love that job so much. Um, you know, you never know what kind of skills you're going to acquire at these random jobs. 
you never know how these experiences in life are going to come together to help you with your, your higher calling. And, uh, I, I think of the first night that I waited tables at the Pelican club and I was so nervous to go talk to a table every night working at the Pelican club. I had the opportunity to practice speaking to people that I did not know and walking up to a table and saying, good evening. How are you all doing? Uh, the specials are this and that and blah, blah, blah. It reminds me so much of being a band leader and talking to the audience from the stage. And so, you know, all of these experiences come full circle and help better inform whatever it is you're doing in your current life. After leaving college, I was a band director at Kip Central City um, in New Orleans. I left that position after a year and took a leap of faith and tried to become a freelance musician. So at this point in my life, I was gigging and also teaching on the side. And here I was teaching with the Louis Armstrong Foundation. I was doing uh, gifted and talented music at Warren Eastern Charter High School. I started teaching at Tulane University where I was doing saxophone lessons. And eventually I got a, a full-time position at the New Orleans Center for Creative Arts. For those of you who don't know, the New Orleans Center for Creative Arts or NOCA is uh, one of the most prestigious high school jazz programs in the world. People like Wynton Marcellus, Branford Marcellus, uh, Donald Harrison, Terrence Blanchard, John Baptiste, all those cats went to NOCA, and it's an absolutely fantastic school. And uh, finally, I am the artistic director of Second Line Arts Collective. On this next slide, I've listed all of the gigs that I can remember doing. And as you can see, I've been playing for quite a while, and, and looking at this is kind of like a, a blast from the past, like flashing back on many years of life here. Uh, so as you can see, my quartet, the Gregory Ajid Quartet, played at the Maison on Frenchman Street in New Orleans for about nine years every Tuesday night, and that was such a blast, and I missed those days very much. That was a really fun band to play with, and woo, yeah, it's been a while. I also played with Delphio Marcellus in the Uptown Jazz Orchestra for nine years. That was every Wednesday night at Snug Harbor. Uh, I played at the Spotted Cat in New Orleans every Sunday with a great singer named Christina Morales. Um, did a lot of stuff with the Gregory Ajit Quartet, the New Orleans Jazz Orchestra. All right, y'all, this is one of my favorite gigs of all time. I was hired by a friend of mine to uh, play at the grand opening of a Winn-Dixie supermarket on Carrollton in New Orleans. And uh, Winn-Dixie is a chain of grocery stores down here in the South. And I remember this particular gig because I had to play solo saxophone next to the bread aisle in the back of the store. And it was one of the most awkward gigs I've ever done in my life. Uh, people were like grabbing around me and trying to get uh, bread and things like that. It was, it was really funny. Anyways, that was a fun gig that I did once upon a time. But the best part was it paid well. So... I'm not mad at that. I've played at the New Orleans Jazz Fest in 2019. I joined Michael Buble on the Love Tour, and we went all over the world. We've played places like Madison Square Garden, the Staples Center. Uh, I believe it's called the Crypto Center now. Uh, we've done the O2 Arena in London and actually done basically the whole world. And currently, we're on tour again. During the pandemic, I worked for a company named Tom Play, where I did a bunch of virtual recordings. And just in general, I've played a million other gigs. I've played private parties. I've played at clubs. I've played festivals. If it's a gig, I've probably done it at some point in my life. On this next slide, I've compiled a list of cool places that I've had the great fortune of traveling to and performing at. I've been to uh, Doha and Qatar, uh, Tel Aviv, Israel, Santiago, de Cuba in Cuba, New York City. One of my favorite places is Moline, Iowa, and I believe that's where John Deere has their headquarters. I've been to Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Canada, almost everywhere in Europe, the UK, and most importantly, Pensacola, Florida. <laughs> and finally, just a couple of cool things that I've done. I've been part of the HBO TV show called Treme. I was part of the Netflix movie called Last Laugh. Um, I've done some movie and television soundtrack work. I have four CDs out under my name. I've appeared on 10 or so records. I'm endorsed by Buffet Clarinets, Silverstein Ligatures, Legere Reads, and I've appeared in Downbeat Magazine and a bunch of other things that I cannot remember. 
So I appreciate you all listening to my condensed life story. And I really wanted to share all that stuff with you all because I wanted to um, show you all that, you know, getting to this point in my career where I'm only playing music and getting to partake in some really fun creative projects, it wasn't necessarily like a, uh, a straight shot over here. There were a lot of twists and turns that got me to this point. And I believe that through my hard work and perseverance, I have been able to fully realize my dream or goal of being a full-time freelance clarinet and saxophone player. I hope that's encouraging to you wherever you are now in your life, whether you're working at a restaurant or you're doing DoorDash or studying uh, music in school. So just because you're not doing it now doesn't mean you're not going to have your dream job in five or so years. Stay focused, stay on track. So now I wanted to share some career advice. And these are things that I've learned along my journey. These are things that um, I've learned through work, through uh, mentors. And uh, just as a preface, this is purely my opinion. And if you think I'm wrong or if you don't like what I'm saying, it's all good. You have the right to do whatever you want. And whatever you feel is uh, most genuine to your heart, I fully encourage you to go on that path. But these are things that have worked for me, and I do believe that they will work for you too. So let's get right into the advice. So my first piece of advice is know where you are going. I would highly encourage all of you all to have a goal in mind and dream big. It's so important to have a goal in life because it's going to give intention and purpose to all of your actions, right? Um, I love starting with this exercise. It's called start at the end and work backwards. I would encourage you to picture yourself in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, maybe 70s and 80s, and imagine what your dream life looks like. Imagine what your dream job is. Do I have a family? Do I have a partner? Um, what kind of work am I doing? What does my day-to-day -day look like? You know, all of those things are really important to imagine because it's going to give intention to all of the actions that you do today, right? When I was young, my dream was to be a great clarinet player. So all of my actions were aligned with that goal. I was practicing as much as possible. I would find great teachers. I would surround myself with other musicians who were aspiring for the same goals. I would go buy CDs. I would take online courses. So all of my actions were aligned with my end goal. And I can't tell you how much time you could waste if your actions are not aligned with your purpose and your final goal. You know, if you want to be a great musician, and you watch TV all day, or you're watching YouTube, or you're not doing things to help create that goal, you're wasting your time. And ultimately, you'll be stealing your dreams from yourself. So the first piece of advice is know where you are going. This is really important. Everyone needs to learn how to be proactive. It's important for all of you all to learn how to take responsibility for your actions and to be the first mover in your life. I think that one of the most important things that any young person or any person can learn to do is be responsible for themselves and learn how to motivate from within. When you're in high school and college, maybe you have your parents and other people helping you stay motivated. But when you enter the real world, you are going to have to be the inspiration for your own motivation. You are going to have to be the first mover. It's really, really, really important to embody this in your life. If I was to wish one thing on any young person, it would be to take responsibility for their lives and to acknowledge that their actions do contribute to the reality of their life. And I totally acknowledge that there are all types of circumstances that contribute to people's life situations that may be out of their hands. But it is really important to first off accept responsibility and do what you can to create the life that you want to live. Be intentional with your actions. Do not wait for inspiration because inspiration will never come. I'm going to say that one more time. Do not wait for inspiration because inspiration will never come. Do the work. Don't worry about being inspired. As long as you're doing the work, you're doing what you need to do. Perspiration beats talent any day of the week. 
So if you show up every day and put in the time and do the work, you are eventually going to beat out someone with talent who does not work. Now, a lethal combo is talent and hard work. If you are someone who is talented and works very hard, you're going to be tremendously successful. My next piece of advice is be humble. One of the most important skills anyone can have is learning to listen. Y'all, there are too many people in this world talking, and forgive me for talking right now, but the most important thing that you can learn to do is listen. Everyone has something to teach you. Every situation that you're in, every person that you meet has something to teach you. If you meet someone that is inspiring, well, they can teach you how to be inspiring. Maybe they can inspire you to be better. If you meet someone and you absolutely hate them, well, it's important to listen to them so you don't do those things yourself. Sometimes the quickest way to your goal is the long way. And this is really important, y'all. There are no shortcuts to being great. You got to put in the time. You got to put in the work. And just remember that when you cheat, you're only cheating yourself, right? If you're a surgeon and you're cheating on your exam, I would be terrified to have you perform surgery on me. And just the same thing as a musician. Like if you're not putting in the time and transcribing the solos yourself, you're just robbing yourself of the experience that you need to become as great as you can be. If you think that you know everything, you'll never learn. As you move through life, you will acquire skills that will allow you to take care of your gift. Y'all, this is so important. All of these random things that happen to you in your life are learning experiences. And through every learning experience, you're going to gain a new skill or a mindset that will allow you to take care of your gift, right? If you were given a million dollars today, would you know how to take care of that million dollars? Would you be broke in five days? Would you turn that million into two million? So it's really important to understand that everything that happens to you in life happens for a reason. And you need to use your experiences to take care of the gift that's been given to you. And most importantly, everything worth having in life takes time. Be patient, be humble. So this is one of my favorite slides, and it's about student loans. So let me start all of this by saying debt sucks. If you're entering the real world and you have $100,000 of debt, that is not a good place to be. So I think that the easiest way for me to sum it up is if you are going to be a doctor, it's okay. Take out some student loans. It's going to be fine. You're going to be making a lot of money when you graduate and you're probably going to be guaranteed a job. So if you're an artist leaving school with $200,000 in debt, I don't think that's the ideal situation to be in. Having a lot of debt is going to impact a lot of decisions that you make in your life. If you have a lot of debt, you may need to take a job you don't want to take. If you don't have any debt, you might not need to take any jobs. If you don't have any debt, you may be able to take a $50 gig because it fulfills you artistically and you don't need to worry about paying anyone off or paying any debts back. So I feel like having as little debt as possible can actually be very liberating when you enter the real world. Instead of starting your life off at minus $100,000, you can start your life off at zero or plus 10,000 or plus 20,000. My advice to all artists is don't take out too much debt. Be very serious about this decision. I think it's important that everyone minimize their debt and really understand that it will impact future decisions. If you file bankruptcy in the United States, student loan debt will still be there. You cannot get rid of it. It's not going anywhere. Maybe they'll cancel a couple thousand dollars here and there, but you will be responsible for paying that debt off. So just Take that decision very seriously and consider what you want your life to look like 10, 15 years down the line. Will I have a job that's going to give me the money I need to pay off these loans? I was very lucky to go to college for free, and I'm very grateful to Loyola University for offering me a full scholarship. I feel like my life started off on the right foot because I did not have any debt leaving school. I was able to live kind of a bohemian life for a while and and play gigs on the street and play gigs at clubs and not really have to worry about money for a long time because I didn't have any debt. I was traveling light. 
It's really important that when you're in high school, invest in yourself, practice as much as possible, um, join as many clubs, acquire as many skills as possible, practice, do as much as you can, because those things may translate into scholarship money when you enter school and scholarship money equals less debt. This is one of the most important things everyone must do, and you must find a mentor. I was very lucky to meet Alvin Baptiste when I was about 12 years old, and he mentored me until he passed away in 2007. Uh, Mr. Baptiste was a master clarinet player, a master educator, a master composer, and I had the good fortune of being mentored and guided by him for a big part of my young life. A mentor can inspire you. A mentor can show you how it's done. They can introduce you to the right people. And ultimately, they can save you so much time on your journey. You know, when you have the right mentor, you literally just need to follow in their footsteps. They've already paved the way for you in so many ways. And all you need to do is listen and follow their instruction, listen to their guidance. There's so many things that you can only learn when you're in the room with someone. You can learn, like, how do they treat people? How do they act? What do they do on a day to day basis? How do they make me feel? All of those things are really important to understand when you're interacting with your mentor because ultimately all you need to do is imitate them. And if you don't have access to a mentor, YouTube, biographies, podcasts, books are all amazing resources to learn from other people. I feel like reading is one of the best ways to get to know someone, their journey, their process, and apply those lessons to yourself. Trust the process. Trusting the process is really important because it keeps you motivated when you're not exactly where you want to be in that moment. It's important to understand that good processes lead to good results. One of my favorite quotes is garbage in, garbage out. So if you're inputting garbage into your mind and into your body, the only thing that your body and mind are going to be able to output is garbage. So it's important that you fill your mind, your soul, your body with good information, clean information, inspiring information. That way you can output things on a high level. When you trust the process, you're enjoying how you spend your time. And I can't emphasize how important that is. In life, the only thing we have is time. I'm going to say that one more time. In life, the only thing we have is time. So if you enjoy how you spend your time, you're living an amazing life. I love practicing. I love learning. I love doing research. I love just nerding out on music. So all the time that I invest in doing those things, it just flies by for me. It doesn't feel like a drag or like my life is like horrible or anything like that. I just, I feel very inspired and motivated to do those things. So find a job that you enjoy. Find a job that makes you happy to spend your time in that way. If you can enjoy how you're spending your time, you're living a great life. Trusting the process and enjoying your time is so important because these moments like graduation, gigs, professional goals, financial goals, personal goals, these things are just moments that come and go in time. Let's say you have a professional goal that you're working towards. It may take you two or three years to work towards that goal, but once you achieve it, that moment is gone. And the true blessing of that experience are the two or three years that you spend working towards that goal. If you can enjoy the process of achieving your goal, you're living a great life. It's important to remember that winning the Grammy or winning the Oscar, it's just a moment. That's 45 seconds on stage, but it was a whole two or three year process to achieve that goal. So it's really important that you enjoy how you're spending your time beforehand. I remember reading The Alchemist and at the end of the story, the lesson that I learned is the journey is the true gold. And so for all of you all, do something that you love so you enjoy the time that you spend and don't necessarily worry about the, the treasure chest at the end. The journey is the true gift. Figure it out. This is one of the most important things that anyone can learn for themselves. If you can learn how to teach yourself something, you're doing really well. We live in an era where it's really easy to learn new skills. You have access to YouTube, books, podcasts, online classes, the internet just in general. If you have a question, you can Google it. If you have questions on how to video edit, to mix audio, to do really anything, you can just Google it. You can find it on YouTube. 
We live in a day and age where you can figure it out. The information is out there. There are people willing and able to teach you, and it's really important for you to figure it out. If you are one of those people that says, oh, I can't do that, and that's the end of it, well, you're right. One of my favorite quotes is, if you think you can or you can't, you're probably right. So it's really important to understand that I can figure it out. If I have a problem, I can figure it out. I think it's really important to just start the process and figure it out along the way. Obstacles are barriers that weed people out. So every time there's an obstacle, I have obstacles, you have obstacles. Some people will stop and some people will find a way to go over the obstacle. And just remember, if you can figure it out, you're going to overcome your obstacle. Learn to listen to yourself. This is a tremendously important skill to have. As we're moving through life, everyone is going to have an opinion as to what is the best course of action for you. Your parents, your relatives, your friends, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, they're all going to have an opinion on what you should be doing. It's really important to listen to yourself, to trust yourself so that you can know within your heart and soul what is the best thing for you. Ultimately in life, you are the only one who can make decisions for yourself. I am the only person that can make decisions for myself, and you are the only person that can make decisions for yourself. Be supportive of yourself. Be encouraging of yourself. Be loving of yourself. Be inspirational to yourself. And once you learn to trust yourself and to be your own best friend, you can listen to yourself to make the decisions that are important for you. I think it's also really important to learn how to motivate yourself without being hard on yourself. This is something that I personally struggled with for many years, and I think that a lot of times I would motivate myself by being hard, by being like, oh, you know, you suck, so you need to practice, or you're not good enough, so you need to practice, you need to do this or that, blah, blah, blah. But it's really important to learn how to motivate yourself from a place of love, from a place of support, and ultimately be that best friend that you would like to have in your life right? We wouldn't be friends with people who are assholes to us or who are mean to us or treat us disrespectfully. So it's really important that we are not that person to ourselves. Learn to be your best friend, learn to trust yourself and make decisions that are best for you. If it were easy, everyone would have it. I'm going to say that one more time. If it was easy, everyone would have it. I have a picture of Drew Brees. If Drew Brees' path was easy, Everyone would be the best quarterback in the world. Everyone would be playing NFL football. But the thing is, it's not easy. And that's exactly why there are only 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL. It's really challenging to achieve these goals. The world is competitive and you do have to put in the time and the effort to achieve these goals. If you want to be the best, if you want to be successful at your career, you have to be willing to put in the time. And sometimes it's not going to be easy. When I was studying with Eddie Daniels back in the day, he told me, while you're watching TV, someone else is practicing and that person is going to get the gig. And that resonated with me big time because I told myself, there's no way, no one is going to practice more than me and no one's going to get the gig. So just remember that while you're chilling, while you're doing whatever it is that you're doing, there's someone else out there working really hard to achieve the same goal that you have. And every bit of effort that they make that you don't make, they have an advantage over you. So don't let other people outwork you. I think it's really important to also acknowledge too that there is room for greatness. I can be great. You can be great. We can all be great, but we have to be willing to do the things that will make us great. If you are the best at what you do, you're going to be all right. And it's really important to learn to monetize your gift or your skill. Just remember, if it was easy, everyone would have it. So that should inspire you to come every day and put in the time and the work because every day there are going to be people around you deciding that the work is too hard or it's not what they want to do. But you're going to show up every day and put in the work because you enjoy spending your time that way. This is my final slide, and I believe that it's one of the most important things you can do in life, and that is to maintain good relationships with people. Every relationship that you make in life is very important. You may not remember what someone said to you, but you will always remember how they made you feel and vice versa. 
people don't remember what you say, but they're going to remember how they felt around you. One of the most important and joyous things of life is having great relationships, having great relationships with our family, with our friends, with our significant other, with ourselves. All of these things can bring so much joy into life. And it's just so important to have great relationships in life. Now, when it comes to your career, it's so important to have good relationships with people because you never know who's going to come back into your life and serve you or hurt you. You may have friends that come back into your life in 10 or 15 years and they end up being your bosses or the person hiring you. You may end up working for a teacher. You may end up working for a student of yours one day. And so it's really important to always have good, strong relationships and make people remember that they felt good around you. Those people are going to want to work with you. Those people are going to want to give you opportunities in life. Most every job and opportunity that I've been given in my life has been because of a relationship that I've had. Teaching at NOCA was because I had a strong relationship with my former teacher. Uh, Working here with Michael Buble was uh, offered to me because I had a strong relationship with a friend of mine from college. So you never know how these relationships are going to come back into your life and help you or hurt you. So y'all, take these relationships very seriously. Be a good person. Be a good friend. And treat people with respect and dignity because they deserve it and you deserve it too. Thank you all so much for watching. That is my career day presentation. If I was to sum up this entire talk into a couple key points, I would say, um, y'all, it's really important to, first off, know where you're going, be proactive, be humble, don't take out too many student loans, find a mentor, trust the process, figure it out. If you don't know what you're doing, figure it out. You can do it. It's important to be your own best friend and learn how to listen to yourself. And uh, don't forget, if it was easy, everyone would have it. And most importantly, y'all, maintain good relationships in your life. It's good for your soul, and it's also good for your business. We only have one life, so make sure that you're living the life that's true to your heart and your soul. Have a good time doing it. Whatever dreams that you have for yourself, make it count. Live the life that you want. Live your biggest dreams. Dream big. Have fun. Enjoy your time. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Gregory Ajid, and I will catch you all next time. Peace.